Amen. Oh, let me get back here. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Well, we pray for those who couldn't be with us today, whether they're, you know, whatever's going on. Uh, we just pray that if they're watching through here, through social media, that God, the word would, of course, it's going to go forth. Amen. And bless them and whoever's watching, um, listening, the word of life. Um, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's a scripture I wanted to get to, a couple of them, you know. It's just like I have these notes, and then all of a sudden the Lord speaks to me about something else on the way too. Not, it's not different from what I have, but that enhances what I have here or what he's given me. And one of them is in First Timothy 4. And we all love this scripture. Most of us do. Uh, Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for the word of life that will go forth from this place today, Lord God, in power and demonstration of your spirit. Holy Spirit, just be our teacher today. Lead us and guide us and help us to follow your lead in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. I really used to like this one, especially the first, you know, first of the year. For bodily exercise profits little. <laughs> and so we always use that one like, see? You know, exercise isn't that important, you know? <laughs> What's important is for us to be in the Word and not be on the treadmill, right? <laughs> for bodily exercise, until I read it in contacts the other day, and the Lord says, that's not what that means. Come on, Rick. He just messed up my whole program. <laughs> God's good at doing that. You know. For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness, everyone say godliness, is profitable for all things, having promise, listen to this, having promise of the life. Everyone say the life. And the life he's talking about is Zoe life. Okay? Not just the natural life, but the Zoe life. Having the promise of life, <coughs> of the life. He says, of the life. I like that. Of the life. That now is. See that? That now is. So it's not just a life somewhere over the rainbow. Although there's been those of, of us that have already gone and are experiencing that other life. Amen? And like we said a couple weeks ago, and the Lord has us on this really focused on being more life conscious than death conscious. Amen? Uh, because when you, when you are, okay, when, when the life of God begins to take its rightful place in your conscience over death in your conscience, then you're going to begin to experience the animation of that life through your life. I'm telling you. Amen. And I, I could feel it in me. It's like there is something going on inside of me because I'm becoming a lot less death conscious and a lot more life conscious. Amen. A lot less sin conscious and a lot, le a lot more son conscious. And so, so he's, he says here, he's saying here uh, that it's profitable having the promise. The promise. What's the promise? The promise of life. The promise of life. And all the promises of God in Christ are God's yes. And he is faithful to fulfill what he has promised, right? He's not a God that he should lie. God has given us life. In this life, we possess his life. The life of Christ. Amen? To enjoy now, and he says, 
and of that which is to come. So there's a life now and the life that now is to come. And he says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. For to this end we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in what? The living God. So when I'm becoming more life conscious, I'm starting to see all these life words and living words. Amen? And resurrection words. I'm saying, wow. Just like, remember when we were coming in from legalism into grace, we begin to see all these words that we never saw before. <laughs> like righteousness is a gift. What? I thought it was always something you were supposed to achieve. I thought righteousness was a work that you did. No, righteousness is a gift we receive because of the work he did. Amen? And so our mind, when we begin to understand uh, the word, and, the, and, and our mind begins, there's a repentance that takes place. Right? There's a change of the mind, and there's a veil that comes off, and we begin to see things like that blow our minds. Amen? And in the same token, we begin to experience more and more of his life with every truth. Right? And what's happening is we are being, we've already been delivered in Christ through the corruption that's in this world. Okay? It's already a done deal. But as our mind is renewed through the truth, we're beginning to experience, amen, the separation of the, the corruption from this world. We begin to, to actually experience in this place called the shadow of death okay I mean you know this world this earth we walk through is called the shadow of death it's the corruptible temporal world that we are not to seek or find life in because there is no life to be found here okay there's things that we enjoy and whatever but our life is not in this world our life is in Christ period but we begin to animate and experience <clears throat> that life in our life and lately, it's been like a fire hose. It's like taking notes under Niagara Falls. Amen? Well, maybe not quite there, but I'm, we're getting there. Amen? But we're not getting there. It's just like the Holy Spirit is purifying our conscience of not only dead works. I like that, too. See, I'm starting to see living God in every living life. You know, purge your purge your conscience, your heart of dead works that you might serve the what? Living God. <laughs> the living God. <laughs> Amen. For it's in him we live and move and have our being. Amen. Our life is in him. It's in Christ. For to this end we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. Okay? And he says, teach these things. So that's what we're doing. We're teaching this. So, bodily exercise profits little. Sell your treadmills. It's not what it means. You know what? <clears throat> what it really means is this. You can't find life exercising your flesh. Through the exercising of your flesh. I mean, you know, your flesh is still corruptible, but pretty soon corruption will put on incorruption and immortality, immortality. But flesh cannot, you can't find life in flesh. No matter how hard you try and exercise through self-will and power to acquire life, <clears throat> I'm talking to the Zoe kind of life. Now there's people out there who said, I'm really living the life. Are you with me? I mean, I'm starting to hear these expressions like, even the expression, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to make a living. I'm trying to make a living. I'm living the dream. I'm living the life. He's really living the life. That's the life. The lifestyle of the 
rich and famous. If I could just get there, I'll really know what it means to have life. But you know what? There is no life in anything of, that, of those things. He says the, the, he says the life, and he's saying that Zoe, the life of man does not consist of the abundance of the things that he possesses. Our life is in Christ. Amen? Now we can have things. We all got things. I like things. I love carpet. I love air conditioning. I love my Honda. Well, I, I like it. Still kind of, well, should I have really done that? You know, got rid of the old big red Hummer, you know. But, but you know what I mean? We, we have things. We like things, right? But in our conscience, God wants us fully aware. He's moving us to a place of the life is not in anything in this temporal realm. Set your affections on things above, not on the things of this world, because your life is hid with God in Christ. And when you see that word life, you see zo it's Zoe life. It's the God kind of life that God created us to share in. He created us <coughs> for fellowship and to enjoy the same kind of life that the Godhead has always enjoyed from the foundation are you with me from the foundation before the before time began it was the intent of God's heart we're going to create man after our image after our likeness to share in the same life that we share in and to share in the same circle of love amen and the same fellowship and through Christ amen we now I'm a child of love. Amen? I've been included in the fellowship. Amen? And I know where my life is, and I'm beginning to realize, and what's amazing, where I'm realizing it in is, is because of the word of life. <coughs> Are you with me? The word of life that I'm receiving. The word of life that I'm receiving is bringing me to realize and to experience the same quality of life that God created me to experience and to share in. Not just in the afterlife, but the life that now is and the life that now is to come. It's all life for us now. Are you with me? Child of God, it's all life. It's all life. There's no death for the child of God. There's no death for the believer. Amen? We just move from this life to a higher life. It's even better than what the Jeffersons experienced. <laughs> moving on up to the east side. No, we're moving on to the high side. <laughs> Amen? And so it's just like, it just keeps getting better from here. Amen? But even in that, see, God wants you to know that, no, I want you to experience my life the life of heaven, it's already in you. <clears throat> you have the life of God in you. Amen? And God wants you to, to realize, he wants you to become more aware of the life that's in you than the death and the corruption that's in your body. Are you with me? I'm seeing it all through scripture now. What Paul wrote. And he says this, I haven't even got to my notes yet. Yay! For bodily exercise profits little. So forget trying to find life through the exercise of your flesh. Trying. It's through the word of life. That's what he's saying, right? It's through receiving the word of life. Well, you know, I go to church every Sunday. Well, I'm glad people... I'm, I wish more people were in here to hear this word. Amen? They're hearing it via social media. But what I'm saying is, it's not in all the things that you do, that do do things. Amen? Jesus told the Pharisees, he said this, I mean, you know, Jesus was the life. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. The life came into the shadow of death. Amen? God sent Jesus, the Son of God, and it says he came in, to those who sat in darkness. 
And to those who sat in the shadow of death, the light came in. Amen? And the life came in. He came to bring us light and light, life and love. Amen? Thank you, Lord. He came to illuminate us. He came to show us. He, you know what <clears throat> the Lord showed me? He says, God, sent Jesus. God didn't send Jesus to punish blind, dead people, but to resurrect them. And how does he resurrect them? He said at Lazarus, he says, whoever, whoever hears, hears my voice, whoever hears my word and believes. Amen? Though they were dead, yet shall they be made alive. It's the word of life. And Jesus says, the flesh profits nothing. This goes back to this bodily exercise. The flesh, flesh profits nothing. He says, the words that I speak, our spirit in life. Amen? It's the spirit that gives life. And the words that I speak are spirit in life. You know what happened right after that? <clears throat> what, right after he said that? Most of them left. It's in John 6, I think. And followed him no more. Which blows my mind. It'll blow your mind. It's like, don't people want life? They're looking for life in all the wrong places. Just like they're looking for love in all the wrong places. When Jesus narrowed it down to he was the life. He's the bread of life. There is no life beyond him. Okay? They said this is a hard saying. They were looking at it through the carnal mind. I mean, he spoke. I mean, you know, Jesus spoke those words of life so that they would receive his life. And be born, amen, of the Spirit. Born of life. That was before the cross. But you know what? Jesus was still speaking the words of life, right? Still speaking those words of life. And it, it's, you talk about like a wool sh sweater really shrinking. So we can't listen. I'm, I'm getting to the point where I... Don't be shocked about anything, okay? Because most are still sold and I feel like there is a listen I feel like the Lord showed me this that we are not to be discouraged about it because he showed me by the spirit there's an epiphany of immortality that's coming to the body of Christ an epiphany of immortality an epiphany means a sudden awareness an awakening that there is no life in this world but the only life there is is in Christ and we who are under this word of life many are going to I believe Isaiah 60 is that arise shine for your life I think light and life are synonymous the life is being manifest their life has come and the life is being manifest through you and people who are in darkness are going to be attracted to the life that's in you and they're going to wonder what it is that you have because they've been searching the world over for life and there is no life but the sun is about to rise up through you with healing in his wings amen and the life is about to manifest. But when I said that, I felt like epiphany of immortality. Epiphany of immortality. I feel like the Lord says, yeah, we need to pray for people because things aren't going to work so well here in the future. Are you with me? A lot of things we're seeing are failing even right now. And what's happening is death in this world is being magnified. And for one reason, it has always been to, to paralyze people in fear 
amen, to manipulate and control people with fear so that they, they actually stand in awe of fear more than they do in awe of God. But we stand in awe of you. Amen? This is such a good word. It's, it's, a, it's a word that I've been hearing out of Slidell, too. And I told him, I said, there's a word of life coming out of Slidell, Louisiana, that has been sown into the world for such a time as this. Amen? How I many you know God wants us to stand in awe of him who is life? Not death. This is the shadow of death. But how many know Jesus stood in awe of God? And that's what gave him the strength to walk through this life. Amen? And Jesus, amen, he came to show us. I always say this. Jesus came to show us what normal really looked like. Amen? A man that was free from the fear of death. Amen? That actually despised, made little of death, and stood in awe of God's life. Case in point, this came to me. You know, Jesus t took naps in storms. Be like Jesus. Take naps in storms. Why did he take naps in storms? Because that storm represented the fear of death. Right? And the disciples who had not yet become so life conscious <laughs> and the life was in the boat. Oh Lord. <laughs> the life was in the boat. But they were more conscious and aware of the death in the world than they were the life that was in the boat. Amen. And see, all this is coming together now. It's just like, and Jesus says, why are you fearful? Right? Where's your faith? What are you standing in awe of? Jesus stood in such awe of the life of God that he t was able to take a nap in the middle of a storm. Amen? It, it will, which shows me that the, when you stand in awe of the life of God, when you become more life conscious than death conscious, it'll bring rest to your soul. Amen? It'll bring rest to... Now, the enemy wants to magnify death, right? And everything in this world is actually almost worshiping death, glorifying death. Amen? You know why? Because when Adam fell, this is what happened, and this is what we need to understand. When, when Adam fell, when Adam bought the lie of the serpent, he was joined, married to death. There was a union, there was a marriage. It was called a marriage to sin and death. And the only one that could break up that union was Jesus. The flesh, I mean, you know, because we were joined to death, so how can we ever by our flesh separate ourselves from death? We were joined to it. No amount of law, no amount of strength, ability or willpower of us could ever separate us from death we were joined to it that's why God says he sent his son God sent his son to break up a marriage God sent his son Jesus to break up an old marriage with the old man to separate us from death and then to join us to himself, who is life. And that mission was accomplished. And Romans 6 says, reckon yourself dead to the old man. Romans 6, 6. 
Six, six, six. Romans six. Romans six book. Romans six, six. Six. Reckon yourself dead to this union. And now married and joined to Christ. And I'm looking through Romans. And I'm saying it's all about the disobedience of one man. Listen, it says this. Through the disobedience of one. Who was that one? Adam. That sin, amen, sin came in and death through sin, it says death, through sin reigned upon the whole human race. We were joined to death. But it was through the obedience of one, Jesus, amen, that this union was broken up. God sent Jesus to break up a marriage. Never heard that one. I never heard it. I said, that's pretty cool. I can, I can understand that. Amen? Because God's a jealous God. And he's always been jealous in a pure way for us whom he created to be joined with him. But because we were joined to death and people in their minds have still not understood, okay, what Christ came to do. See, they, and even, listen, not just the world, but most of the church, they still think it's all about behavior. They think that God sent Jesus to make bad people behave good. <laughs> when really, G God sent Jesus to make dead people alive. God's going to, you know what? The more you get this, the more life you're going to experience. I'm telling you. But this is what happens. See, I took this picture in a clothing store. And everywhere I see, I see things like this. A skeleton riding the wave. What a cool thing. Are you with me? How many of you know what I'm talking about? There's even things called sugar skulls. You know, there's things. I mean, and I don't think they did this. I actually ordered a T-shirt a couple months ago that said, Jesus loves the hell right out of you. And you know what they sent me? Sugar skulls. Now I'm saying, I don't think that was a coincidence. What do you think? <laughs> because the enemy is still trying to magnify death over God's life. Amen? And his love. And so, you know, I don't usually put things like this, but I do it because it's, it helps us, gives us a real picture of what's going on. Even though we already know, we look around, we say, why are there so many skulls? Why are there so many movies on death? Have you ever looked at the, all the movies that have to do with death? Most of them are about death. Amen? Not life. Amen? And so, driving a car, holding a cell phone, and they're saying, listen, listen to me. They're saying this is really living. This is the life. But this is the real picture. Living the life, living the dream is not driving a nice car, not having a nice house, not having a cell phone, not having the right job. That is, that is not where the true life is. And those that, listen, those that have not had their, the veils opened up, would say you're you're foolish they're calling me foolish amen but i'm telling you and i'm not saying the life is in religion there's more death in religion probably than anything amen the life is in jesus dressed now why would i put this and no, i you got to excuse me but i have to do this to give us listen this is what happened in the garden. Adam died. Adam and Eve died. Amen? What's the first thing they did? They said they were naked, but you know what they were really saying? I'm no longer clothed with life. That's what was happening. They were no longer clothed with life, so they reached for the fig tree 
to clothe themselves and attempt to find the life. But you know what the Lord reminded me today? When man fell, amen, and corruption entered into the picture, it entered into the entire world. Are you with me? Body became corrupt. The world became, every plant, every tree became full of corruption, including the fig tree that he reached for to cover himself with. There is nothing, the only one that can truly clothe you with life is Jesus Christ. And God comes and he takes away that corruption covering. And he says, this is the only way. The only way that you'll ever experience my life is if I cover you with my life. Amen? But we, the world, because of their death conscience, and think, you know what sin is? Sin, to me I'm seeing this now. Sin isn't the bad behaviors and all that. That's a byproduct. The bad behavior is a byproduct byproduct of deception of the lust of the flesh of seeking but sin is this sin is the deception of seeking life where there is no life sin is the deception of seeking of seeking life in death in seeking life in corruption it's a deception. And so Jesus came to divorce us from sin and death. So that we could find life, the true life, in him. That makes sense? Christ's life abolished death. <laughs> That's what it says. The Bible says Jesus Christ abolished death and now has given us life and immortality in his name. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Tell you what, preaching's getting easier. Because I'm saying, wow. When life, when, when immortal life and the life of God takes preeminence, takes place, the high position over death in your conscience, then you will, you will, all of a sudden you will see yourself lifted up and seated with Christ in heavenly places. Glory. I'm getting excited, I'm telling you. Life and I feel like this this is for such a time as this God is is demonstrating this word of life and he's cutting through all the bull carnal bull that we've heard throughout the churches throughout the ages and they've been dis they have been doctrines demonic doctrines of deception that keeps us distracted away from the truth of, of the root of all things. And that is that Jesus came to deliver us from death. Amen? And join us together with him whose life. So we have life in it. I didn't even get to this. Oh, Lord, that's okay. Lord's getting to a lot of things. Amen? For bodily exercise profits little. And he's talking about he's talking about acquiring life. That's what he's talking about in context. But godliness, everyone say godliness, is profitable. I looked up that word godliness. At first, you know, first impression and what we've been taught in the past. Godliness, you know, so often we go to behavior, you know. I mean, God is, he's, he's turning the, our minds, the ship on that one. I always said, you know, you couldn't just turn the Titanic around on a dime. 
And I, I don't know about y'all, but it's taken a little bit for me, for my mind to, to turn and change and to see things in the reality of the way they really are. Amen? That's why we have to continue to continue. It says, faith comes by hearing the word and, amen, the word of Christ. Amen? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. And that word is faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. So people that say, oh, I've already heard that. I'm good to go. You're the one that needs to hear it. <laughs> because we're saying it's the word of life that you hear and receive and say amen to. That's going to transform your life. If you think it's just me, it's just, okay, I heard that, and but uh, you know, and then I'm going to do what I can do by my flesh to, to gain or exercise this life. You're back to square one. You're back to trying to find life just like everyone else in the world through the flesh. Amen? Through the arm of the flesh, reaching out for that fig leaf and trying to cover yourself. Amen? But he said godliness is profitable. That word godliness means to revere. To stand in awe. And I'm telling you something that we've been hearing, and this is true. When you stand in awe of the life that you have in Christ. Amen? <clears throat> when you stand in, when you make God's, when you magnify God's life amen how many of you know there is nothing greater than the life of God I don't care what it is the Bible says this life his life swallows up death his light swallows up darkness amen and so when we give life its right position, amen, life, the life of God, and that life that now is in me, and we see that our life is, is, is really in our immortality, we see it in the face of Jesus, right? Who is seated at the right hand of God. How many of you know Jesus, not only did he go to the cross and die, but the Father raised him back to life again. And he trusted the Father to do that. How I many you know Jesus had to trust the Father to do that? He didn't raise himself back up. He trusted the Father to do it. <clears throat> and on the way over here, <clears throat> but it's, you, you understand, it's, it's, that's why I said, well, we've got to sing these songs about our living hope and, and the life of God. We, we need to more than ever, I'm telling you, is magnify the life of God. And that we serve the living God. And our life is in Him. In Him, we live and move and have our being. Acts 17. Thank you, Lord. It's nice to, to you know, He brings the, the Word and the Scriptures and I don't... <clears throat> I always have to go to him, but I can refer you to him. It's Acts 17. And the scripture about death reigning over the human race, that's in Romans 5. Okay? Where we're to reckon ourselves dead to the old man, Romans 6. Romans 7 is, is now that we're no longer joined to death, the law, or death. Amen? But married to Christ, we now can bear fruit unto God. Amen? And Romans 8 is about we're, we're not trying to, by the flesh, acquire life. Amen? Because we are under a new way called the law of the spirit of life in Christ has set me free from the law of thinking I can acquire life in death. All these things are making sense to me now. The law of the spirit of life of Christ set me free from the law of sin and death. 
See, I always looked at that law as the law of Moses, but there's a law. There's, there was a law in motion and deception. Amen. When Adam fell, that caused him to think that he could find life or to try and acquire life in corruption. Y'all get it? And so it's all about life and death. Wanted dead or alive. So, Acts 17, I'm almost through here. Acts 17, Paul is preaching on Mars Hill. He's seeing people trying to find life in death. He's seeing people trying to find life in graven statues formed by their own hands, by their flesh. And the Lord took me back to the golden calf. He, they did the same thing there. They created a golden calf. Why? To try and find life and comfort. That's how crazy mankind is. And he says, don't think that life, God is the giver of all life and breath. He's the living God. You will never find life in that statue. Let me introduce you to the living God. To the giver and the, and the source of true life. The one who created you to share his life with you. Amen? He says he, wants, he says he is the only true source of life. And the Lord, the Lord by the Spirit said to me, he says... Grave, graven image. Grave and image are those things where anything where people are trying to find life apart from me is a graven image. It has no ability to give life. None. Zero. It's a great... And that's why, you know, and I'm saying, and that's why God says, don't you seek these graven image, images, you know? He says, you're going to die. It wasn't that God was saying, I'm going to kill you. He says, you won't find life in a graven image. The only true life is in me. In him we live and move and have our being. That's what, that's what the gospel was. That was the message. Amen? And it says that in Acts 17, it says, many believed, were persuaded and believed. S some said, well, we want to consider this more. We'll hear more. Which is fine. At least their heart was open to it. While others said, this is ridiculous. And you're going to have three groups. You're going to have those that will believe what I'm saying. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the gospel right now. There's no life apart from Christ. And the Holy Spirit is here. It's persuading your heart to believe it. I know that. But we've also been given this thing called a free will. And you're either going to be persuaded to believe it and all of a sudden find that life. Or you're going to be a person that says, well... That's different. Let me hear more. And that's okay. And then there's those that just say, no, I, I'm going to still seek life in death. <laughs> you tell me what is the most ridiculous. Amen? But we still continue to preach the gospel. Amen? Our life is in, and I was going to, actually I was going to, I said, Lord, what am I going to? title this and you know you got to put a title on the YouTube I guess and I thought about listen I thought I'll throw this in because it's all about life and death remember when Jesus went to raise Lazarus from the dead and Martha was freaking out and says if you would have been here he wouldn't have died and Jesus says he'll live again well I know in the last day and Jesus says, I am the resurrection 
and the life. And whoever believes in he, me, hears my voice and believes in me, though he were dead, yet will he live. It's the same truth today. Amen? And he says, Lazarus, come forth. Amen? And he had to name him by his name because everything in those tombs around would have come out. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> and so Lazarus comes hopping out. He didn't come running out. He came hopping out because he was bound in grave clothes. And a lot of people still have grave clothes on. Even though they've been called out of the tomb, they're still hopping around in grave clothes. And Jesus says, loose him. Take those grave clothes off, amen, and put grace clothes on him. From grave clothes to grace clothes. Amen? And that is done by the word of life that we proclaim right now. We're taking off the grave clothes and per putting on the grace clothes. What's amazing after that happened, the next chapter, the next chapter it says that Lazarus was sitting at the table with Jesus. In the place called the shadow of death. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. You are in me. Amen. A table you have spread before me in the presence of my enemies. A table you have spread before me in the presence of my enemies. It's amazing how all that connects. I mean, oh, God has spread a table before us today. And the last enemy to be put down is death. Amen? He's already abolished death. But soon corruption will put on incorruption and, immor and mortality will put on immortality. Right? It will be swallowed up. Totally. And what's amazing, Lazarus, was the one that was raised from the dead, was sitting at the table with Jesus listening to his word while the Pharisees plotted to kill Lazarus and put him back in the tomb. <laughs> Why is that? And see, it's all tied together because I'm saying, listen to me, the more you become life conscious and the more you proclaim the resurrection and the gospel, don't be surprised if not everyone's going to be so excited about that. You know why Paul was persecuted? Because Christ rose from the dead. Amen? He was preaching the gospel. If he would have just preached Jesus was crucified, they wouldn't have done anything to him. Are you with me? Because it would have just been, okay, well, he did a lot of stuff, now he's dead. But they said, the one you nailed to the tree. <laughs> Amen? He's alive. He's alive. And that magnifying life over death is something that the enemy is still trying to squelch because he wants people to be more death conscious than life conscious. And first Corinthians, and I'll close with this. First Corinthians, are we going to do communion? This has been good. I've been having fun. First Corinthians 15. I didn't get to one note. First Corinthians 15. No, it's, yeah, it's 15. First Corinthians 15. <laughs> Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel. This verse 1. He's saying he's declaring the gospel, right? Which I preach to you, which also you received, in which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which also I received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture. That he was buried, and then he rose again the third day. <laughs> 
I'm telling you, we have emphasized, and we need to emphasize the cross and what happened at the cross, but we need to really emphasize the resurrection. Amen? Because without the, and you'll read on down, without the resurrection, then we would still be dead in our sins. That's what it says. Without the resurrection, we would still be in union with death to the old man. But through the power of the resurrection, he says, thank you, but he says this, he says, because there was a lot of voices saying Christ didn't really raise from the dead, right? Trying to squelch the life. That was the main thing they were trying to squelch, was the life, the resurrection life. And it was the enemy behind that, trying to squelch the life. But he says, but Christ has risen. Amen? Christ has risen. You know, I was just thinking, you know, the Lord has, I said, you know, we really make a big, big to-do thing of it every year on Easter Sunday. It needs to be every day. Every moment of every day is resurrection day. And because he lives, I live. Amen? And we need to give voice to it. And we need to, we need to proclaim that message to people so that they can experience the same life. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your body that was broken for us. Thank you, Lord. He who knew no sin became sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Thank you, Lord. Death was put to death. Thank you, Lord, once and for all. And you said, do this in remembrance of what I've done for you, that you might experience the same life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Forgiven of sin doesn't just mean forgiven of bad behavior. It means divorce from death. Divorce from death. Thank you, Lord, that we have been divorced from death and united to you. We do this in remembrance of you. Thank you, Lord, for your blood that was shed for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. But you shed your blood. Thank you, God. Again, showing that we have been divorced from sin and death. Through your, but because of your shed blood. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for your resurrected life. Thank you, Lord. That because you live, we live. We celebrate your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give God praise. I really feel like <clears throat> the Lord has taken us to uh, just new levels. <laughs> I'm enjoying it thoroughly. Thank you, Lord. We need to thank God every day, I'm telling you, for the word of life that he gives us. And, Lord, we thank you for this word today, the word of life. Sown here today, sown or whoever hears it through um, social media or wherever they're listening, YouTube. It's on YouTube as well. And I want to mention that too, that you, YouTube, right now, you find our all of our videos on, it's at Rick Sarver, Alive in Christ. Rick Sarver, Alive in Christ. And the YouTube videos for our church are there. And so people, I'm telling them so that they can find them too. And also, I want to mention too that that if any, because I never mention this, but I said people do. If you ever want to give, you know, and we don't believe in guilt giving. We believe in generosity. 
but if you believe in the message that's being sown and you want to support to me this message is the most vital message in the world today it's the only 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 message word of life that can bring life but if you want to give online you can go to gracelifemb.com and there's a pay button there like a paypal button and you can give online so it's gracelifemb.com or here you can give in the box you know that and on that note i don't know if you mentioned this or not at the announcement well we had a little meeting last night can i mention that the finances the finance finances just go over the okay and it's just like i mean there's not that you know i mean but god's still provider amen god's still providing amen and it's like it's just god is so awesome amen and it's just like we continue to move forward in whatever however fashion he wants us to move amen believe in that he he is our provider so thank you lord for this word of life we receive it we embrace it we stand in awe of you and the life that you've given us to in jesus name thank you god amen amen bless you